Bottoms up. So this video will be about <clears throat> uh, being prolific as an author and why I do not recommend it if you are an, an aspiring writer and why do why I do not prefer prolific writers and uh, you know <clears throat> this is just my choice but I don't care how good you are right uh, if you have 500 books you know I'm not gonna read them all I, I don't care how good you are you know and this might be controversial or scandalous but I just don't have the time you know and this is just my personal preference but I cannot stand prolific authors uh, mainly because okay it doesn't matter how much of a genius you are it doesn't matter how good you are if you are prolific if you just write down everything that comes in your mind without considering if it is good or not uh, you will produce a lot of banality and a lot of trivial vanilla shit it is what it is okay uh, This is my philosophy as a writer. Instead of producing 50 novels, a novel every year or a novel every six months, um, you should spend a couple of years perfecting a single book. And it doesn't matter how thick or thin it is. Uh, it is better to constantly work on a single book than to produce a, a a series of big ass novels that you know could be could be amazing but they just fail of uh, uh, fall short of their uh, of their greatness right uh, this is the tragedy of being a prolific writer and listen being prolific I have noticed if you are prolific, if you just pump out, you know, um, uh, me mediocre or substandard uh, or subpar work, you know, every six months, every year, you're just going to pump out a book, you will probably be noticed quicker. Probably. Uh, that's what I have noticed. So if you pump out book after book, year after year, you will be noticed and probably you will sell better. Probably, you know. That's what I have noticed. But this is the curse of being a prolific writer. That you will have a, a few gems that are amazing, but you will have a lot of garbage. You know, case in point, uh, you know, Stephen King. Uh, I haven't read a lot of his work. I have read some of his classics that are, you know, amazing. But from what I understand, he has a, a lot of subpar work. And this is not trying to trash the guy, right? Um, but this is what happens when you're a prolific writer. This is what happens when you write down everything that comes to mind without letting it ferment. Because what happened to me in my writing experience, in my writing journey, is that I wrote something that I thought was amazing and then a couple weeks later or a couple of months uh, later I went back to it and I realized holy shit this is a piece of shit this is ugly disgusting superficial nonsense right so I had to get rid of it you know because I thought in the beginning as a writer that I had to produce I had to write every day and you know, I don't care if you're a master, bro. Uh, what's going to happen is that you're going to produce garbage. You're going to produce garbage. Uh, there's this interview with Umberto Eco. And he says, you know, uh, you know, a lot of young writers today, they don't take the time to let their work ferment like good wine, good cheese. A book has to age, 
So let's let's say you spend a couple of months writing a book. And then what you have to do, you have to let it alone and walk away and leave it in the dark for a year, a couple of months, and then and then come back to it and then work on it some more, right? In my reading experience, all, I've read a lot of classic, famous, uh, renowned books that were written in a week, in a couple of weeks, and there are some good parts to those books, but overall, you can tell that the writer was just putting it down. I have to get it, get this done. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm going to start my new book. I got to get this done. And you can see that not a lot of thought or consideration was put in the book itself because the story, the structure, the characters, the plot lines, the plot threads are lukewarm. They are vanilla, right? So just because you have a good idea doesn't mean that the rest of the book has to be um, less than the worth of that good idea. And a, a, a good example of this is uh, Ray Bradbury's uh, Fahrenheit, which is a book centered around a fabulous idea about uh, books being burned and firemen being the ones that burn them and so on and how amazing are books this is a wonderful idea but the whole book most of the book is it is lacking of course uh, you see it is lacking because he wrote it in like i don't know a couple of weeks maybe less right and it shows it is a famous novel i give it props for what he, it has done but at the same time, to me, it's not a top-tier book because it, it, it lacks a great deal. The characters are one-dimensional. A lot of the plot threads are just, they just go in nowhere, right? Because the whole book centers around this one great idea about books being burnt, right? Because books are dangerous. Good, good, a good idea. That is, that is the anchor that holds that book together. Everything else, it, it is subpar. It is subpar. And, you know, I don't regret making that statement. Right? Uh, a couple weeks ago, I stumbled upon a video on Isaac Asimov. And uh, it said that he produced, like, over 500 books, you know, novels, essays, scientific theses, and so on. I mean, who's going to read all of this? You know, you just can't pump out whatever comes to mind without thinking, without developing that idea. You just can't pop, you just cannot write down everything on the spur of the moment, right? I mean, I, I cannot imagine just not only writing every day, but just being prolific like pumping out a book every six months or a year, every year for, for the rest of my life. No way. The only good aspect of being prolific is that you will produce a lot of work in a, in a short time and then you will be noticed quicker. Uh, you will probably sell more and, uh, you know, because you have so uh, so much work, you're going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be profitable, right? It's going to be profitable. That's the only good aspect that I can see when it comes to being a prolific author. But I don't want to be prolific uh, because I want, you, see, this is my, this is my mission as a writer. If I can produce a single book that is fucking amazing on, on, on all aspects, right? If it takes 20 years or 30 years, then I'm going to, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to focus on that and I'm going to produce one amazing book instead of producing 50 or a hundred novels that are, you know, somewhere in the middle, right? Somewhere in the middle. I don't want that, you know? And case in point, uh, this is why uh, 
this is why uh, J.D. Salinger is such a beloved author. You know, you can criticize him because of this or that. But he produced a, a very a small body of work that just is loved by the readers generation after generation, right? I mean, you could say that The Catcher in the Rye and some of his other work, which are short, uh, you know, they lack in, <clears throat> in certain areas, but overall, you can clearly see that this guy gave it his all, right? His characters, the way the story flows, you know, it is, it is, it has intent. The author cared about this character. It, he cared about conveying a feeling or an idea that was more than just, I'm going to write something today and then I'm going to write something else tomorrow, right? So, you know, that's it. You know, uh, being prolific is uh, insane to me. I just want to write a couple of books, you know, a handful of books that are just... Uh, the best versions <clears throat> that they can be, right? That's what I want to do. I want to have an entire bookshelf of nothing but banality and average, ordinary uh, mediocrity. That's what I do not want, even if it, if it brings me profit. I don't want that, right? So that's about it. When it comes to writing, uh, it might not be the best choice to... Uh, be prolific, right? Be prolific. Uh, even the best top-tier novel novelists that are prolific, if you um, if you really read most of their work, you can clearly clearly see that they did not put in all the effort and all the consideration that a book should require, right? I mean. I have a few Stephen King books that I have to read, but one that I was really excited about was Duma Key. And that book could have been amazing. I, I've done a review, and uh, that book had all the hallmarks of being a masterpiece, but you can clearly see that the author just wrote it and was done with it. Right, and that is not my philosophy when it comes to writing. Right, if it were to me, and I'm not comparing myself to Stephen King, but if it were to, up to me, that book would have been completely different. It will, it would have gone in different areas in different ways because overall, that book is mediocre to me. It had amazing concepts, amazing plots and characters, but it just went nowhere because it was written. Who knows how fast, right? Because he is a prolific author. And there are endless examples, right? I mean, being prolific is just crazy, my guy. It's crazy. But if you want to do it, you know, fine. Uh, and that's about it, you know. See ya.